Wars, of course, have ramped up in recent weeks, and sadly, uh, the victims of that war seem to be dairy farmers. The latest price cut is threatening the sustainability of the industry itself, so we're told, and it struck a chord with the Australian people. Throughout the week, we've seen nationwide protests both on the street and in the supermarket shelves for branded milk empty while the plain label dollar a litre remains untouched. But does paying more for your milk actually help the farmers? Well, joining us to discuss from Brisbane, are dairy farmer Greg Dennis and industry consultant Steve Spencer. Morning to you, gentlemen. Morning. G'day, guys. Great to have you with us. Now, first to you, Greg. I mean, you run your own milk company, so you know the costs involved from udder to bottle. Um, yes. How much should a litre of milk cost in order to be able to sustain a farmer's business? Yeah, well, Andrew, we certainly see Australia-wide, you know, dairy is very regionally based and there's differing costs around yep. the country. So I, I can speak specifically about our situation in Queensland. And the, the cost of milk to retail should be closer to $2 per litre. Yep. I mean, that enables every sector of the market to make a fair profit or a fair margin. And uh, what we've seen on the back of the dollar a litre price war since Australia Day 2011 has been uh, an unsustainably low price and that is inevitably passed back to the dairy farmer yeah. through the milk processor. So, so we see huge problems and the, the sustainability here is key. We've seen an increase of milk trucked into Queensland in that period by 400%. Yeah. So we have a huge shortage of supply in Queensland yet our milk price is still in the 1990s to the yeah. dairy farmer. And so, as you said, milk prices, you know, they're the same in supermarkets around Australia, even though it costs less to produce in southern states. So just looking at your price, I mean, how does it, how does it all work? Who gets what and how much money do you end up with at yeah. the end, you know, for you guys? Well, well we've, we work our numbers as a small and independent milk processing facility and we pay our dairy farmers running a separate business. So... Mm. So we're able to pay a premium price. Actually, it's not even premium. It's a fair price to our dairy farmers. And we, we bottle milk for two families now. Yep. And um, the price is where it needs to be for the farm to be profitable. Yep. And the price that we then pass on to the retailer at hot, a wholesale price is enabling our milk processing facility yep. to be profitable also. So there, there's definitely regional differences. Yep. We can't deny that. If we take the supermarkets out of the equation and, and we look at the, um, you know, the, the milk processes like, you know, your Fonterras and your, and your Murray Goldens and that sort of thing, yeah. um, you know, they're, they're blaming the, the milk price, the deflated milk price on, um, you know, milk prices falling globally. Um, Steve, why do you think the prices are so low now? Well, the prices at Farmgate in Victoria have, have slumped this year, um, down considerably from last year, and it is to do with uh, the global market. The global market's in in acute oversupply, right. um, and, that's, and that's driven that down, and eventually that catches up with Australian farmers. Why is there an oversupply, though? I mean, um, you know, people keep saying, for example, that, you know, the Chinese market has retracted a little bit, but presumably that'll bounce back with the increasing growth of their middle class. Where's the oversupply coming from? The oversupply, a large amount of the problem is Europe. Europe's probably produced 85 90% of the extra milk that's come onto the market. They've let go some regulation, which has allowed some pent-up capacity to flow to the market and they've right. had good weather, etc. and that's really created an abundance of milk. Okay. So a lot of consumers are really concerned about what dairy farmers are going through. They're looking at buying the more expensive milk to try and help farmers. Is that actually working? Do the farmers get more money if we um, pay for more expensive milk? Well, well, Ange, what we've seen in the last couple of weeks is, has been incredible to me. I mean, as a dairy farmer, uh, I have not seen a groundswell of support from the consumer Australia-wide for a food product ever, you know, in my life. Yep. I'm sure my, my dad in his 70s has never seen it either. So that, that's quite humbling and, um, you know, and I, sorry, I feel a bit of emotion sure. that we're seeing that support. But the truth is if it doesn't last beyond this week, then it's all for nothing. Mm -hmm. So the consumers have to continue to support branded product week after week, yep. ongoing. Can you tell me this, um, you know, Steve, if I go to the supermarket, I'm, you know, and I want to avoid the dollar milk because I want to support my farmer, but there's still quite a choice here between, say, $2 milk up to, like, $4 milk. Yep. Um, is, is there a big difference between those milks, and does it make a difference if I go the expensive option? 
There's not a lot of difference between the milks. You do get some, uh, so a product like A2 has got a different protein, so yeah. that's, that's, a, that's a point of difference. But when you get down to the standard products, they have low fat or added calcium, whatever, there's not a lot of difference between them. Yeah, uh, right. That's right. But, but the truth is, even though the milks might be the same, as we're told, the truth is the way the money flows. Yeah. And there's a lot of confusion out there right now, Andrew, where people are being told the money's not going to get to the farmer if you buy branded milk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that is true today and tomorrow because we have existing contractual arrangements. Yeah. But that is not true next week or the week after. Right. And there's no reason why big milk companies can't renegotiate mid-term existing contracts. Sure, sure. Like, they renegotiate downwards when it suits yeah, them. Yeah. There's no reason why they can't renegotiate upwards. All right, Greg right. and thank Steve, so well, listen, thank you so much for joining us this morning and, and, and talking us through that. Perhaps we need to uh, go the more premium dairy items with the higher margins, like, you know, yummy cheeses and stuff yes, to support exactly. our dairy farmers as well. Thank you, gentlemen. Still ahead for you. The